Thank you, Sister Annie. That was, I'm going to talk about the power of God also. And uh, Brother Ricky also gave me a very good introduction. So, um, first of all, God has shown his power in many ways. Uh, Romans 1.20 says that for the invisible things of God, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So God shows his power through creation. Also in Exodus chapter 9, God says to Pharaoh, And in very deed for this cause I raised thee up for to show in thee my power, and that my name should be declared throughout all the earth. So God also showed his power through Pharaoh. And you remember 40 years later, when the children of Israel went to the promised land, the, the people of the land still remembered the power of God. They remembered what God did to Egypt. So the, the topic of this renewal is the attributes and work of God declared in the gospel. So God has shown his power in many ways, but today I want to focus on how he's shown his power through the gospel. Um, why don't you turn with me to Ephesians 1. Uh, my text is in verse 19. We'll start re reading in verse 15. Ephesians 1, 15. Wherefore I also, this is Paul speaking to the Ephesians, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above prince, all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding and, and revelation that we may understand, that we may know what is the exceeding greatness of your power. Lord, this is, this is something we cannot know on our own, and we ask you to reveal it to us today. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So, um, as an affirmation to what we're talking about, um, Paul was praying that the Ephesians would know, that they would know the power of God. They would see be, how powerful God is. So this is something we should be talking about. Just in case anybody had any doubts, Paul knew this was something important for the people of God to know. So we need to know how powerful our God is. So God's power is exceedingly great. It is the power that raised up Christ from the dead. Jesus said in John 10, 17, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay my life down that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. So it took power for Christ to lay his life down, and it also took power for him to raise it up, to take it up again. See, God was showing us his power through Christ's death and his resurrection. Uh, but God didn't just raise Christ from the dead in the same way that he raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus was raised all the way up 
to the Father's own right hand. God's power lifted Christ from death all the way up to heaven. And not, not just from death to life on the earth. He was exalted all the way up to the right hand of God. Amen. It took a lot of power to raise Christ from his death, the death of a criminal, to the exalted position, the head of all things. Amen. See, this took a great deal of power. Amen. So God showed us his power through raising Christ from the dead. 2 Corinthians 13, 4 says that he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. Amen. But uh, the resurrection of Christ is not the only way that God has shown his power in the gospel. Um, Isaiah chapter 59 Verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear, for your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness, none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Now here is the amazing part. In 1 Peter 3, 18, it says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. See, our sins had separated us so far from God, it took an amazing amount of power to bring us to God. See, this, this is, God was able to take us, a people that was so sinful and so separated from God. We were alienated from God and enemies in our mind by wicked works. And we who were afar off are brought, brought nigh by the blood of Christ. See, this is just a testimony to God's awesome power. And, and the, more, the more I learn, the closer I get to God, the farther I realize that I was from him. And I am just every day, I am so amazed that God could take such a sinful soul and redeem it and this is just a testimony of God's great power. Amen. Colossians 1.21 says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you, to present you, it's the same you who were alienated and enemies in your minds, by wicked works, not just, not, you know, you were, you were enemies in your mind, but you backed it up with your actions, too. To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. This is just amazing. He can take us. And he makes us holy and unblameable and unreprovable, not in man's sight, but in God's sight. Amen. What kind of power does that take? 1 Corinthians 15, 9, Paul says, For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God I am what I am. He, God, God showed his power through Paul. He said he was chiefest of sinners. And God was able to take that man and make him be the apostle to the Gentiles. God was able to use Paul, who had persecuted the church. God was able to use him to preach the gospel. Amen. So... I want to think about for a while how much power was needed to take away our sin. How much did it take? Was this something that somebody else could do? Psalm 49 verse 6 says, They that trust in your wealth, in their wealth, and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, 
None of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him for the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever that he should still live forever and not see corruption. See, the redemption of our soul is precious. When Christ redeemed us, he was doing something that no one else could do. This, the, our, our redemption is precious. Proverbs 29, who can... Proverbs 20, verse 9, who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. The salvation that God has wrought is not a small thing. See, no one could ever save himself. We have the whole Old Testament as a testimony to this that no one could save himself. Hebrews 10 verse 1 says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For when, then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have more, no more conscience of sins, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. This work was so great that there was no other possible way to do it. See, our salvation could only be wrought through the power of God. There was no other way for it to be done because no one has the power that God has. And John 1.11 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Brethren, it took power for us to become the sons of God. So for everything we learn about God, there's a proper response. And remember in the parable of the talents, um, the servants responded in accordance to what they knew about their master. Remember the one he said, I knew that you were a hard man and therefore I put my talent here in a napkin and here it is, I brought it back. See, his, his, uh, what he knew about his master dictated what he did. So I want to talk a little bit for a while about um, what the proper response to knowing the power of God. What, what are we supposed to do now that we know how powerful God is? Well, um, my text in Ephesians 1 says that this exceeding great power is to us word who believe. See, this great power that God has is available to us through faith. It is to us word who believe. So this, uh, when we realize how powerful God is, we must also realize that this same power is available to us. God, has, God is showing us his power and he's saying, this is what I'm going to give to you through faith. And... Um, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus tells us the proper response to knowing this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to unto the end of the world. Amen. So he, he gave us <laughs> he gave us the proper response. When we see how God, powerful God is, then we go and do his work because we know his power is available to us. Um, Paul, could, Paul could see the power of God and this, this was his response. Romans 8.31 he says, what shall we then say to these things? 
If God be for us, who shall be who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him? How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Amen. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So Paul had great boldness and confidence since he knew the power of God and since he knew that God was with him. So when we, when we see the power of God, this should give us confidence because we can say, this is our God. We know this is the one fighting for me. This is our Father. Our Father is the, the most powerful being in the universe and the most powerful being anywhere, anytime. So the power of God is available to us, and the apostles definitely used this. They used the power of God. Their lives were so committed to God that they needed the power of God. They needed it every day. They were so boldly proclaiming the truth that they needed the power of God. And I'm afraid that many Christians live in a way that they don't use the power of God. And I'm not just talking about those Christians over there. You know, we could talk about them over there all the time, but this is, that wouldn't really benefit us any. But I want to ask you, are you living in a way that you need the power of God? Are you so boldly doing the work of God that you need his power to get you through every day? Your work may not be the same as the apostles' work, but any work that you are doing wholeheartedly for God will require the power of God. So God has made this power available to us through faith. He wants us to use it. So are you living in such a way as to need the power of God? All right, I want to end, end um, on one more verse in Isaiah, or one more passage in Isaiah 52. And this, this is a passage that shows the power of God through his salvation. I thought it would be good to end on that note. Um, Isaiah 52, verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings, Good tidings of good that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart ye, depart ye, go, from, go, out, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rearward. So God has made bare his holy arm in the gospel. This is God just showing to all the world his power. Amen. Now when God delivered Israel from Egypt, he gave them instruction about how to eat the Passover. He says, and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. But this is not the way that God has delivered us from our sin. He said, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel shall be your rearward. In Colossians 2.13, it says, And you, being dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, 
blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, Amen. triumphing over them in it. When the Lord delivered us from the power of darkness, he spoiled them openly. Amen. When the Israelites went out of Egypt, they went out at night and they went out in haste. But Christ has defeated principalities and powers. Christ has destroyed him who had the power of death. He is not fleeing from the enemy. He defeated him. He leads us out in a triumphal exodus, saying, Behold, behold, everybody look. Behold, I and the children which God hath given me. He's showing to the whole world his power, showing them, look at, look at this, we're leaving. We're leaving. All you principalities and powers, look, behold, I and the children which God has given me, we're leaving this place of sin because I have defeated the enemy. God is a powerful God.